one of the most beneficial things you can do for your health is to stay moving throughout your day. But this is one of the most difficult things to remember to do. It's not that it's necessarily physically difficult for many of us, but it often slips our mind. So how can you go about making sure that you stay active throughout your day if you find yourself sitting a lot or just getting caught up in your daily tasks? That is exactly the question that we are gonna be answering on this week's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast. We're gonna cue the intro song and then we're gonna dive right into this conversation. Welcome to the Exercise is Health Podcast. Where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, what's going on, exercisers? This is Charlie. Before we dive into this week's episode, I want to ask you if you've ever thought to yourself, wow, the information on the Exercises Health podcast is so great, but how do I go about implementing it? This is a question that we have been hearing time and again from so many of you. And because of that, we have created something that you are going to absolutely love. And that is the One Workout Away Challenge. See, you are just one workout away from feeling stronger, from functioning better, and from living healthier. And over the course of 28 days, Julie and I want to teach you how. To learn more about the next One Workout Away Challenge and get signed up, go to owa.matschaumburg.com. And without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. Hey, welcome back, exercisers, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie. And Julie. And we're coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg, here in Schaumburg, Illinois, where we believe that your health is your most valuable asset. And the single best thing that you can do to both boost and protect this asset is exercise. Specifically, exercise is geared towards building the health and function of your muscles. Now, so many of you exercisers have taken the time to leave us a rating and review, leave us feedback on Apple Podcasts about your thoughts of the Exercises Health Podcast, and we truly appreciate that. We want to take a moment right now to highlight a review that has recently left. This five-star review says, Charlie and Julie's weekly podcasts are awesome. The two of them, as well as their guests, speak on different topics all related to our health, and I have learned so much. In many of their podcasts, I feel like they're speaking specifically to me. Every week, I look forward to each new episode. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and that of your guests with the rest of us so we can all be a better version of ourselves. I love love this review for so many reasons. Number one, because I love that this listener feels like we're speaking directly to them. You know, one of the things that I think we love about our podcast and love about our platform is that exercise in general is really catered to certain people and leaves out most people, like regular people that are wanting to use exercise for their health. So I'm so happy to hear some feedback that you feel like we're speaking directly to you. It's reviews like this that we love to hear and really keeps us going. So please take a moment, maybe right after you listen to this podcast or pause this now and go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review. And who knows, maybe you'll hear the review on the podcast. Now, this week, we are answering a question that comes up fairly frequently, not only for our clients, but for ourselves. And that's how do we stay moving throughout the day? Now, some people... Actually, I would say a fair number of people come in and they'll be like, you know, my form of exercise is just I'm constantly on my feet and I'm constantly moving all day. But there's a good majority of people that find themselves sitting in traffic, sitting at the office, sitting at lunch, sitting at dinner. And it's just a lot of not moving. I would also throw in standing at lunch, standing at the office, standing at it, you know, if you have a standing desk or whatever. So it's a lot of not moving throughout the day. And believe me, I fall victim to this as well. There are many days where it's like, dude, you have to get up. You have to move around because you've been sitting at your computer working on this project for the last couple hours. Get up and move. So I'm right there with you. If you feel like, oh my gosh, the day goes by so quickly and I don't realize by the end that I've only gotten 2,000 steps in or whatever. So we want to discuss that with you today. Of like, Well, how can you go about making sure that you remember to get up and move throughout the day? Charlie, I really feel like people in their life, like their lifestyle, either is very oriented towards 
one or the other or neither. So one of the three options, whether your lifestyle has a lot of all the time exercise or your lifestyle has a lot of special event exercise or your lifestyle has a lot of neither. (laughs) So I feel like it's difficult to really be hitting the two that we really need to hit, which is you have a good amount of all the time exercise throughout your day and we have a good amount of special event exercise throughout your day. Because I think, again, most people's lifestyle kind of leans towards one or the other. I want to give you a couple examples of this and I think this would be a really good time to also review, especially for our new people, what is all the time exercise and what is special event exercise. So all the time exercise is the exercise that you get when you're just low intensity moving. So when you got out of bed and you went to brush your teeth and walked up and down the stairs and made your breakfast, that movement would be all the time exercise because you're moving, but you're not quote unquote working out. When you got up and refilled your water at the office or used the restroom or you used the stairs rather than the elevator, that is not quote unquote exercise, but that's all the time exercise. So all the time exercise is the movement and exercise that you get throughout the day that is low intensity and is just general movement. On the other hand, special event exercise is the exercise that you get when you are quote unquote exercising. It's when you change your shoes and go for a run. It's when you go to the gym for 30 minutes or an hour. It's when you hop on your cycle bike and you get a ride in. This type of exercise is higher intensity, but it's shorter in duration, right? You're doing it 20 minutes, an hour. It's not all day like the all the time exercise. So in many podcasts, we've referred to these terms. This was a brief overview of them both. And it is important that you get both. Today, we're going to be tackling this all the time exercise. How do you get it in if it's not already naturally in your lifestyle? Yeah, I definitely find myself in the category of doing my special event exercise, but struggling to remember to get my all the time exercise in. And maybe you can relate to this because in my head, the way it's framed out is like, well, my special event exercise I know I want to get that in every day, so I block it off in my calendar. This is when I'm going to be exercising. And then now that I know that, okay, at 1 p.m. today, that's when I'm going to be exercising, in my head, I also have it that like, okay, well, I need to get you know these tasks done before 1 p.m. because that's when my workout is. So I need to focus on getting those tasks done until 1 p.m. comes around, and I completely forget, completely neglect the time from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. where I'm just working away and then I realize, oh my gosh, it's been a few hours since, you know, I've gotten up and moved around. So so this is one of my biggest things that I struggle with and have struggled with for a long time is when I get sucked into a project, like breaking myself free from it and getting up and moving around. So we definitely, I'm going to share what I found to have worked well for me because even though I have the tendency to do that, um, I found some ways that have been super effective at breaking me out of that. So actually more days than not, I'm up and moving around quite a bit. Charlie, you're not the only one that struggles with that because we do a program called uh, the One Workout Away Challenge. And A few one workout aways ago, I think it was two cycles ago, we asked the question, what is the what is the biggest challenge that you have with getting in your all the time exercise? So the question was, what's your biggest challenge with getting up throughout the day and moving? And all of our participants responded that they get sucked into projects and they really want to get them done or they're really focused on getting things done. And now I know that this podcast and the OWA and all of our platforms really attracts doers. I mean, I know you guys are hustlers. You're ready to get things done in your life and in your health. And I know because I'm married to Charlie (laughs) that y'all can get really sucked into projects and four hours go later and you're like, oh, has it been 30 minutes yet? And I'm like, "Uh, you have been sitting on your bum for four hours. Anyways, so we are talking to you and I know that there is a lot of you out there because we know our audience. You guys are doers. You get involved in your projects. All right. So what are some ways that we can start to implement this 
low intensity physical activity throughout our day, what we're calling all the time exercise. See, the great thing about all the time exercise is it doesn't need to be done in these large chunks. We're not asking you to get up and move around for 20 or 30 minutes. That's that's reserved for your special event exercise. These all the time exercise bursts, they are these little bouts that are three, five, maybe upwards of 10 minutes but you sprinkle them throughout your day. And that's really where the challenge is, right? So we remember to do it maybe once or twice, you know, when it's time for lunch and then when it's time to go back to work, like that that's when we get up and then we get up again. But aside from that, it, it can be really challenging. So what are some ways to do it? Okay, one way that is kind of boring, but really effective is to just set your phone timer. And I say it's boring because like it's not sexy, it's not flashy, it's not like, oh, it's this really cool trick, but you know what? It's simple and it's convenient and it's something that you can do really easily, okay? If you have a smartphone, which I only know one person in my world who doesn't have a smartphone <laughs> and he doesn't listen to this podcast. Your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, um, my guess is if you're listening to a podcast, you're listening to it on a smartphone, which means your phone has a timer app on it. So you set the timer app to go off after 25 minutes, after 35 minutes, after 50 minutes, and you get up and you move around. Now, here's the thing. There can be a lot of hesitancy with that. There can be hesitancy of like, well, what if I get sucked into a project and I'm in my flow and I don't want to break free from that? So I want to offer this. I heard a really cool study that was done on high performers, like people who were performing the highest in life, in business, in work, and they section off their work chunks on average for 50 minutes at a time. 50 minutes. So what that means is the people who are getting the most done, and like Julie was saying, we know you're doers, all right? You're trying to get stuff done. They commit 50 minutes at a time to focusing in, and then they give themselves a little bit of a reprieve, and then they come back, and then they focus in for 50 minutes. So if you're feeling that hesitancy of like, well, but what if? I just want to let you know that the people who are outperforming everybody in the world, this is exactly what they're doing. And they're able to outperform everybody in, I'm not going to say despite doing this, but likely because in large part, this is helping to fuel that. That's a great tip, Charlie. And we've been giving that tip for forever. And just listening to you say it sparked a new idea in my head. So I'm going to pitch it. And I think it's a good one. I want to share with you guys a story from my own life, which is how I thought of this idea. So we have a two-year-old daughter. She's almost three. And she started all of a sudden waking up at like four in the morning. And that is like not cool. <laughs> but I was thinking to myself one day, I thought, well, why would she possibly know that it's four and not seven? I mean, it's dark a lot here. We live in Chicagoland area. It's dark until, well, now it's starting to get light. But in the winter, it's dark until, I don't know, 7 30, 8 a.m. before she gets any light cues from her window that, you know, it's time to get up. So we got this light alarm that changes colors. So since she can't tell time yet, she has a reference point of like, oh, okay, when it's red, that means it's still time for resting or being quiet. And when it's white, that means that you know, it's time to start the day. So now she has like a reference clock or light to tell her like what time it is and what time it's not. So on the days that I don't really care when she wakes up, I have it change colors. So if she wakes up and it's red, she knows to go back to sleep. If she wakes up and it's white, she knows she can come out of her room and it's time to, you know, have breakfast and start the day. Now it might be white for 30 minutes and she might still be sleeping but that doesn't matter but on the days that I do care when she wakes up I have we call it the tweet tweet alarm which means that it turns white and it starts tweeting so it it will wake her up whereas the light won't wake her up it's just like a visual reminder so what I was thinking is that I don't know about you but I hate alarm clocks so with the phone if I'm in a flow and I'm doing work and I have my phone timer on I think it's kind of annoying for it to go off and be like shoot I just had this idea I was developing it and now I've been completely interrupted I have to look at my phone turn it off and blah 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 so that's like the tweet tweet alarm it's like you need to stop at that time to adjust it but you could set up something just like the light alarm that is 
not as disruptive. So I was thinking, you know, those sand timers that you flip over, they're like totally low tech and totally cool. So you can probably go on Amazon and find any sand timer that you want. But the thing is, is that you'll remember that it's on your desk. And when you have a break in thought and you happen to glance over at it, you might think, oh, my sand is up. Why don't I get up and move around? It doesn't matter that it was finished you know, draining the sand for a minute or two, but it allowed you to finish your thinking. It allowed you to finish your process and you looked up from your work anyway, so probably meant you needed a break. So that could be a way if you feel like that timer is a little abrasive for you and it, and it is it disruptive, the sand timer might be a good way to have the uh, quote unquote light alarm without the tweet tweet alarm, mm-hmm. which is more disruptive. I love that. I, I love that idea. And I, I really enjoy the the contrast between the two, like why you would use one versus another, because you're right. Having that phone alarm go off can be super disruptive. And if you feel like you're on a verge of a really powerful thought and that alarm goes off, it can be like, oh, I've been working all day to have that one thought and now it's gone. Yeah. And so that can be incredibly irritating. And so, yeah, I really like the the sand timer idea. All right, you guys ready for my favorite drinking water? I actually love to chug water. It's just a number one passion of mine. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I do really like to drink water. Anyways, one of our best tips that uses biology is drink water. That will help you move throughout the day because you're going to be too busy getting up and going to the bathroom multiple times a day. So one of the things is it will keep you hydrated. It will also make you have to stand up and use the restroom. And you might think, well, is that really a big deal? Yeah, it is a big deal. Because if every hour you have a valid reason to get up and go use the restroom, that's awesome. And I feel like once you're up, if the walk to the bathroom wasn't that long, then you can do a few laps around your desk or around your house if you're working from home or around your gym if you work at MAS like we do. (laughs) So drink a lot of water throughout your day and that'll be really, really helpful. I always try to have a big glass of water on my desk and I try to drink it every single hour and it works like magic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have to get up every hour and use the restroom. You know, that brings up such a great point that a lot of times it's not the moving around that's difficult. It's the getting up that is the, the biggest barrier. And so if you can have like a legitimate biological reason is like I need to stand up now now all of a sudden that barrier gets a lot smaller and you can go and get moving after you're you're already standing up so yeah there, there's a lot of use to that tip right there and like you're saying it also keeps you hydrated throughout the day which is huge now this tip that I'm going to go into this is a little bit more of an advanced tip it takes a little bit more setup time on your part but it can actually make things a lot easier for you once you get it established, all right? And so, again, it's a smartphone tip, and what you can do is you can go into the Reminders app on your phone. I'm sure there's something like that for Android. We're Apple users. We're not Android people. (laughs) (laughs) We're iPhone users, so I'm sure there's a Reminders app or an equivalent with Android. But anyways, uh, what you would do is you'd go into your reminders app and you would set recurring reminders to go off every hour on the hour. And not only that, but you put the task that you want to do during your break in as a reminder. Charlie, that's a good one. Right? So it goes off. Let's say you get to work at uh, 9 a.m. and it goes off at 9 a.m. and it says, walk around your office three times. You're like, okay, before I sit down, I'm going to walk around my office three times. And then at 10 a.m. it goes off and it says, walk up and down the stairs three times. You know, oh, okay. I'm going to go to the stairs and I'll walk up and down. And so then you have it go off consistently throughout the day like that, you know, every hour or every 45 minutes or whatever. And it tells you exactly what you're going to be doing. And why this is big is because If there's anything that can create more friction for you doing something, it means it's less likely that it gets done. And one thing that we see time and again that creates friction for people is when they have to make decisions. So the more decisions you have to make of like, okay, I'm going to move around. Well, what am I going to do? Well, then 
you can completely remove that decision by typing it in as a reminder. 9 a.m., I'll walk around my office three times. 10 a.m., I walk up and down the stairs three times. Uh, 11 a.m., I do a three-minute circuit of, you know, some squats, uh, some push-ups, and, you know, a 30-second plank. And I, you know, I go through each of those twice. That's a three-minute circuit. And then, you know, I just kind of do some high knees or what, you know, just like marching in place in my office. Okay, cool. Uh, Noon, then it's time to go to lunch. Before I go to lunch, you know, I'm going to walk up and down the hallway five times. And so you have it all mapped out. You don't have to think about what you're going to do during the day. Those decisions are removed. Once a reminder goes off, you just have to adhere to it and get up and do whatever the reminder is telling you to do. Charlie, I love that one. I don't think you've ever given that one before. That's a new one. Yeah, I've I've haven't given it on the podcast only once or twice on some broadcasts that I've done. But when I thought of it, I thought, this I think would actually be really useful. Like I said, it would take a little bit of setup at the start, but you just put it as a recurring reminder and then you're good. Yeah. But I think people really like that because it's like you, you're deciding to be in charge, you know? And I think that's really important with, with exercise. And I want to give you this last tip before we wrap up this podcast that the biggest barrier to you moving throughout the day is you deciding that it's important or not important. Anything that we decide is important enough gets done. Anything that we deem not important or is not high enough on the important list will not get done. And you guys are doers. You know that. And we have to decide that exercise is important. I need to exercise because there's a lot of other important stuff that you're going to do during your day that you also need to do. But exercise has to be one of them. And once it's important enough, once your health is important enough, you will find ways to do it. I mean, think of any example in your life that maybe wasn't relevant to you in the beginning and now it is relevant. You find time to do that important stuff. For example, I used to not have kids and that meant that I almost had 24 hours a day that I got to choose what I wanted to do with. And now I have kids and it is very important for me to be home with them some of the days. And that means that I don't know what 10 hours of the day is literally given to them and I want to give them that time and my health is also important so I also have to now find time (laughs) to exercise minus the 10 hours that I gave to my children during the day. So it all is dependent on what is important to you and what is important enough to make you feel that it's mandatory. So it is up to you remember that exercise is mandatory for your health and you will find the time. Now you might be wondering, okay, well you gave us all these tips and tricks about how to get our special event or sorry about how to get our all the time exercise in. But what's your favorite way of getting your all the time exercise in? I would say hands down our collective favorite way of getting our all the time exercise in is to put on our dance party mix Throw on a couple songs. Yes. And uh, yeah, just dance away for three, six, nine minutes, however long the uh, the songs last. And then we get back to it. Plus our children love it, especially when love we're at it. home. Like if we're chilling or whatever, we're sitting on the ground playing games or something. We'll, you know, turn on a dance music or Baby Shark and we'll all get up and just dance or we'll do ants go marching. And, you know, we have a little island in our house that will go around and around and around. So That's probably our top favorite for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is feeling like, I want to get up and moving throughout the day, but so many times I get to the end of the day and realize that I just haven't done that much physical activity. How can I break free from this? Share this episode with them so they can learn about some really simple strategies that they can start implementing in order to make sure that they get up and get moving throughout the day. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find this episode when they're looking for information on exercise and when they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week.
So what do you think about that episode? Did you find the information useful? If you would like some more in-depth guidance on applying this kind of information to your own workouts, make sure to sign up for the upcoming One Workout Away Challenge. You can get registered by going to owa.matschaumburg.com. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Julie and Charlie Gates, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical issue, consult a licensed physician.